In this video, I'm going to actually answer your guys' research questions that have been left on as comments on my YouTube videos. The very first one is, I wish you'd explain what a figure outline is. A figure outline is just simply the figures and tables that you're going to have within a research article or even within a review article if you're going to reproduce images from other papers. That's all it is. And so what a figure outline allows you to do is it makes it really easy to be able to tell a story. It's basically like giving a presentation, right? If I am in my results section of a presentation, all you're going to see is slide by slide is just my figures from my research paper or from my research study. And if you can do that, look at a figure and explain the conclusions that come from it, then that's all you're really doing in creating a figure outline is just creating those visuals so that you can then just talk through it instead of having to write through it first. If you look at any research paper, just look at the visuals that they have, whether they're figures or tables, what you should be able to do is actually tell the story of the research article to another person. And so if you watch my video on how to do a journal presentation, so like you take another person's research article and I actually did it within PowerPoint, I actually put the presentation together. If you're interested, I'll leave that down below. But if you do that, you're I was literally just taking the figures and putting it into my presentation. And then I could just talk through those figures. And so it makes it really easy to do, but that is ultimately what a figure outline is. So the next question comes talking about Julius AI. They were asking if whether this tool could be used within a methodology section or even within a review. Is it legal? Will our paper get rejected? With something like Julius AI, I would say that I personally would not put it within my method section. What I would do is I would use something like Julius AI, generate the code, and then I would run the code again through my own Python or R, Julius AI now does R. I would run it through my own system to make sure that it is accurate. I would make sure that I understand the code that was generated. And so I'm using it to help me develop code more quickly, not necessarily to actually do my data analysis. I think this is really important because you, if you just say you're using Julius AI, there can really easily become questions of like, okay, well, did you understand what it was doing to your data? Is that actually, are the conclusions you are generating accurate to the how the data was analyzed? Because if you don't understand the code and you just run code, then you're going to have issues being able to explain that data or potentially issues with saying it did one thing and it didn't do that thing. So that's what I would do is I would use it to more quickly generate the code, but then I would make sure that I understood what the code was doing. If there's any part that I don't understand, look it up, ask Julius AI, what is it doing? And run the code yourself is what I would personally do. It, will the paper get rejected and is it legal? The legality is really based off the journal. So some journals say you can't use AI with anything that's developed in our journals. Others have looser policies. Some say you can't use AI written things within it. And so if you are violating the rules of that journal, you're probably not going to get published. But Again, I think you really want to think about data integrity and data analysis integrity and making sure, I think the bigger issue here is that you end up creating a conclusion based off an AI analyzed data that's not actually accurate. And so that's what I would focus on instead. Again, use AI to help you generate better and faster work. Don't just trust the AI. So the next question is really similar. It comes from also one on Julius AI, but I'm gonna extend this to kind of all AI tools. And it says, it's so great to see how much time a person can save using AI. But the question that comes to my mind is, is it safe to use AI? Is there a potential to steal your data or your scientific discovery? So this is more of a question about if you are giving the AI information can it take it and someone else can learn your scientific discovery from it? And what I will say is most of your products that use AI are using a paid version of AI. They are paying every time you make a call to a given AI. And so because of that, most of the time, the, the policies that at least these AI softwares are putting out, these companies are putting out, is that if you are paying, they don't use your data in the generation of models. 
That's what they're saying. Is that what they're actually doing? That's a bigger question, but that's what they're saying they're doing. So in theory, if you are using one of these softwares, it should not, the, the AI model should not be being trained on the data that you are providing to it. If you are using free ChatGPT, that is different. That is a research use. It's meant literally to gather data on how to become a better LLM. So if you are using free ChatGPT, I would be more concerned about providing that. It is most likely going to be used to train that LLM. Now, should you worry about it stealing your data or stealing your scientific discovery? For me, this is always such a curious one because I it's really common in my field to present your data at conferences before it's published. Um, and I have papers that are still not published that I presented at conferences almost 10 years ago at this point. And so what I would say is I am not as worried about someone stealing my scientific discovery from using an AI tool personally. And this is because in chemistry or in biology, you have to go and collect that data and you have to be able to analyze that data. And so even if it sparks an idea, it doesn't necessarily mean someone's going to be able to go and do that. And if they do that, they're probably going to do it in a different way than you did it, just because of the resources they have available. So for example, if I do a study on steroid analysis by mobility and I present it and someone else before I publish it takes it and goes and present and takes it and it's like, okay, I'm gonna do this project real quick. Most likely they're not gonna use the exact same steroids I use. They're not going to use the exact same instrument I use. They're not going to use all these exact same things, which automatically makes our two projects different and therefore both able to be published. And so I'm not as worried about stealing the scientific discovery. Stealing the data, on the other hand, again, this one was specifically on Julius AI. Julius AI, you can upload your Excel files of data to the server or CSV files of data to the server. And it will store this data for you. And I think that is where you start going into a gray area because if it is sitting out on the internet, it can be hacked. And if you just assume that anything you're using, if it gets hacked, what is the repercussions to you? If someone goes in and steals all of your data, I think, the issue with them being able to then publish it is that they're not going to know the methods that generated it. And so either they're going to just make up some methods, which might not explain the data. I think it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do that, but I do think it is fair to be a little bit more cautious around it. So one thing you can do is upload, but then go in and delete the file after you're done using it. That way, if someone comes in and hacks later on, they're not going to be able to gain access to that file. The other thing is, and so for example, in the company I work with, we use AI to help us generate code. I work as a data scientist. and But the thing is, we are not allowed to upload our data into any form of AI. And I like this approach. I use it to give it examples of what, how is my data structured? What does it look like? What are the errors I'm getting? And then it can generate the code for me, but I don't directly upload the data and I don't directly have it analyze that code for me. So I think that's the biggest thing is if you really wanna be secure about your data, I wouldn't upload it personally to something like Julius AI. I might upload an example set or a subset so that it can run the analysis, but not the full data. The next question we have is what is the best tool for the PhD thesis? And I'm not exactly sure how to answer this question specifically because there's so many steps to a PhD thesis. So are you trying to generate your idea? Are you trying to write your thesis? Are you trying to identify literature? Any of these things. And I would honestly say first, learning how to write a PhD dissertation or thesis is going to be the most important step. And so for me, I have the Scientific Dissertation Academy. It's now a part of my Research Mastery Academy, if you're interested. That is what I would do first, is learn how to actually write your dissertation. Then you can use AI tools to help you with that. So if you're trying to organize, I like organizing a notion. I know that my literature organization notion template people have used to organize their literature for their dissertation. If you're trying to find literature, if you struggle with search engines, use something like SciSpace, Elicit, Consensus. There are different videos that I have on my channel comparing those if you're wondering which one's best for you. I don't like telling you which one is best because you're gonna have a different research workflow than I have. And so what works best for me may not work best for you. And what I try and do on my channel is say, 
this is what's possible with these tools. And a lot of people can very quickly go, oh, I know that I like this flow better, or I really like this feature that this one doesn't have, things like that. If I say this one's best, half of you are gonna come for me and be like, well, I like this one better. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense because you have a different research workflow than I have. So that's what I would do for finding literature. If you're using, if you're really struggling with the writing process, First, learn how to write a dissertation, learn how a dissertation is structured, learn how to do your paragraphs, all of that, which is gonna be helpful because it's gonna be very similar to learning how to write research articles too. If you're struggling with like writer's block, then I would go Yomu AI, Jenny AI. If you're struggling with editing and get, being consistent, if you're struggling with, if you have to write it in English, you're struggling with the English language, I would go Paper Pal, I think is one of the best for that specific for meeting those concerns. And so that's ultimately what I would likely do. Those are the different AI tools I would use. I don't think there is a one AI tool that is like, this is the AI tool for dissertations, just because there's so many different ones and there's so many different categories of AI tools there. So the next one is, is it ethical to use ChatGPT only for language editing, checking grammar or paraphrasing a sentence? And I would say, yes, it is ethical to use ChatGPT for editing. I don't see this any different than using something like Grammarly for writing aid, Microsoft spelling and grammar check, anything like that. The one caveat I will point out is with ChatGPT, if you ask it to edit for spelling and grammar, it's not usually only going to do that. Typically, it likes to just rewrite things. I think it is a little bit harder to do that. I would personally not use ChatGPT for that. I would use Grammarly has an AI built in that does really nice rephrasing of things. Um, Paper Pal has spelling and grammar. The other thing that is kind of nice about that is they tend, if you're in the biology chemistry world, they tend to be able to identify the scientific words a little bit better. But I would use something that is a little bit more controllable and you can see the suggestions before you click on the one that you want to implement then ChatGPT where you submit something and then it rewrites it because to get to the prompting where it only does grammar and spelling is a little bit more difficult to do. So that would be my recommendation. I absolutely believe it is appropriate to use AI to edit your writing, just like it would be to use Microsoft Word spell checker or whatever you're using, any general spell checker. I don't really think it's that different. Just make sure that if you are using something like that, you're not losing your voice and it's not rewriting it to the point where it's now basically AI generated. The final question that I'm gonna answer, and this is on a video about the new illicit notebooks, is how do you delete notebooks? So this was actually not a feature released when they first released the notebook. So I will leave a video up here, but basically you go into your illicit account, you click on the notebook that you want, and then you go up to the three dots next to your notebook's name, and you can now click delete notebook there, and it will delete it from the system. And so that's now, there was a feature released a little bit later after they released release the notebooks feature, but that is now how you can delete your notebooks. If you want Q and A's in the future, leave me a comment down below on this video with the question that you want to ask. And if this is something that you guys like, I will film more of these in the future. If you are struggling in your research, I have a few different research guides that are free linked below. And I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.